features a uh, little bit of a tradition of, of TDF. Uh, it gives you an idea of what we have done during the last 12 months. Uh, actually, uh, looking at the, our history, I think that now we can say that we, we all share a, a four year long dream. Uh, being one of the founders and being uh, uh, Michael and Florian who will be contributing to the speech are both founders as myself. Um, I think that uh, going back four years, uh, more or less these days, four years ago, we were in Budapest for uh, the OpenOffice.org conference and uh, we have the first uh, and last uh, meeting, face-to-face -face meeting, before the fork. Uh, actually, it was on the second, so I think it just four years ago. And uh, uh, if we uh, could dream at the time where we would be after four years, I don't think that not even uh, uh, dreaming uh, really in a crazy way, we would have thought that we would be here. Not just, I mean, not here in terms of Bern uh, as a city, but here in terms of uh, the size of the project, the story of the project, what we have achieved in four years, what has happened around us in four years. Uh, and uh, so I, I would like to give you a little bit of a different view of what we have done. Uh, just trying to organize in cycles what has happened so far. Uh, we, let's say that we have, we have four releases, including the, the first beta, that were the, uh, the first cycle, uh, the very first cycle, and uh, the, the, the project was led by a steering committee. The steering committee was uh, a result of that meeting on uh, September the 2nd, 2010, and uh, it actually uh, managed to, uh, to, 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 make, to give uh, a, a formal shape to the project uh, because uh, I think that four years ago there, there were many ideas, many, many nice ideas, but there were not a shape. Now there is a foundation, there are roles, organization, there, are, there is a structure, so it's a completely different story. Then, uh, uh, between uh, from March uh, 2012 to February 2014, there has been the first generation board of directors. Uh, I say first generation because uh, it was more or less uh, uh, an, an heritage of the steering committee, and anyway, it was uh, uh, m most of the founders were were in the first generation board of directors. Uh, in uh, uh, February, and March 2000, uh, 2014, there is a new generation board of directors, and uh, I, I show you why. Uh, this is, uh, uh, these are the members of the board of directors. You can see that only uh, two persons are founders of the project. I mean, everyone has, is, is deeply involved in, in the project but there are only two founders. There are a number of people that are first generation, and with first generation, I, I say they, they came into the project while the steering committee was in charge, so during the first two years. And then you have a number of people that is second generation, which means that they were attracted and came into the project while the first generation board of directors was there. So they are completely new. Uh, they are new, they are bringing new ideas, they are bringing new ways of doing stuff. Uh, of course, the, the, well, the founders have a, probably share a common problem. They've all been influenced by 10 years of history, uh, which is not a problem. It's a, it's a problem and a virtue at the same time. But we were all involved, deeply involved in the OpenOffice.org uh, project. And uh, of course, if you want to innovate, you cannot just look at the past, you have to look at the future. So it, it, having new people inside the board of directors is, uh, is absolutely an advantage. And uh, 
what has happened in terms of uh, uh, to the product, more or less. I mean, this is a, this is not view that maybe is not shared by developers, but uh, or is just partially shared by developers. But this uh, this is what someone like me that is not technically skilled can uh, understand by looking at the project a little bit from outside. So the, the first uh, two years, so 2011-2012, were a lot about refactoring the code, cleaning the code, uh, uh, making the code more modern. Uh, I know that there is still quite a lot to go there, but we are in a completely different position from 2010 when, when the fork happened. And then uh, in 2013-2014, uh, the, the, the new major releases, it's all about improving feature and improving performances. Of course, there is still refactoring there, as if there were, there were new features there. But I think that the focus is now changing a little bit. The fact that we have uh, uh, companies like Cloudon that have decided to base on LibreOffice, their developments is significant in the sense that uh, it's a recognition of this kind of work that has been done. And of course, it's contributing a lot on this kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, uh, there will be, I, I can tell you that there will, there, there will be other companies uh, uh, that will be announcing product based on LibreOffice shortly, uh, always on the mobile side. Of course, there are different ways of handling that. Uh, the cloud on uh, is probably the best and the most tight integration that we can dream of. But then there are other companies that are just taking the engine and using the engine on, in a different way. I think that everything contributes to growing the ecosystem and growing the project and making the project more active. And of course what has happened in the meantime is that the, the foundation has grown and the foundation has grown thanks to donations, and we will see the trend afterwards. Uh, but the foundation has grown now. Now we have a structure. We have a structure, and uh, these are the people. And I, I leave uh, the microphone to Florian, that he will talk about the people. And uh, so that's to go. Huh? So hello. Um, also from my side, thanks for being here. Um, as Italo said, a couple of words on how we have grown over the past years. And um, as Italo said, thanks to the uh, generous support, thanks to the donations, we have been able to gain structure to get people involved in TDF to make things possible that we deemed um, impossible quite a while ago. So we have had the opportunity to hire uh, or contract a few employees and uh, contractors. One is sitting here, Klopf. Hey, <laughs> that's Klopf, who's been working for TDF since uh, summer of 2013. And um, actually, if you download a LibreOffice release, the chances chances are rather high that um, it has gone through his hands because he's our release engineer. That is, uh, he's responsible for, you know, pushing the buttons, triggering the releases, um, checking for last blockers that might stop a release, and um, distributing the files on the mirror network. That's, that's his role, and uh, he's working for TDF, so we have this very important role um, of the one deciding actually about the final release and then making it possible directly inside TDF. Second one, sorry for the rather dark picture, is uh, Sophie. Are you in the room? I'm here. Ah, Sophie, thank you. You can see your life in a cover over there. The applause is totally justified. Sophie was coordinating uh, the LibreOffice conference from the TDF side, so a lot of things that are uh, possible here and that you see here are also her merits. Um, Sophie has been with TDF for, um, uh, since December 2013 and uh, she has a couple of work areas. One is um, administrative assistant, that means dealing with all those uh, you know, requests like travel refunds when you uh, will file your refund, it goes through her hands. Uh, she is, um, she's been with the community 
for, for quite a long time, so she's very well connected and um, therefore is doing lots of uh, communication, coordination inside TDF, um, bringing people together, um, making projects happen. That's actually Sophie's role and um, glad, glad to have her, of course. Italo, you can <laughs> see him right here. <laughs> um, Italo is also one of the TDF founders, um, is one, uh, is, is the mastermind behind our marketing, driving uh, the marketing, and um, right now is working on a certification program for TDF and has joined us, I think, in December 2013 yeah. on, on a paid basis. Um, he came up with the developer certification first and now is working and actually doing finalizing bits on the um, trainers and migrator certification. So um, soon we will see the, the option of having people working um, on and with LibreOffice certified, overseen by TDF and driven by Italo, who does a lot of other very, very good things for TDF uh, in his proponent time. So it's, it's great to have him around. We have Alex, not sure if he's here. Yeah. Alex has been uh, with TDF also. Yes, applause, please, please. <laughs> Alex has been with TDF uh, for quite a while as well, and these days is um, on, a, on a paid basis, contracted basis, our infrastructure administrator. That means he's the one driving the infrastructure platform uh, when you download LibreOffice, when you go to the website. Um, that's his work right now. He's in a rather large project dealing with migration, as we call it, Infra 2.0, uh, migrating to scalability, high availability, um, deployment. You see, as the community and as TDF has grown, also the, the infrastructure requirements have. And actually, you deliver a talk, I think, tomorrow at 10. So if you're more interested in that, don't miss out on his talk about the, um, all those, those fancy, geeky technical details on that topic. We have Robinson, is he in the room as well? Hey Robinson, wave, wave hi to Robinson. <laughs> Robinson has been um, as a volunteer with TDF for, for quite a while um, and now has been contracted just last month. He's um, uh, the QA engineer, that means TDF is investing more into the quality of the software, um, organizing, testing, bug triaging, by bisecting. Um, one of his items is also to get actually more volunteers involved into this area of working. So we, we fostered a volunteer community by that. Um, and I think it's really good to have roles um, like those directly inside TDF to, to take care of the stability and the, the quality of the software. And you have me. Um, uh, thanks. I have the, the duty to, to coordinate all of that, to deal a lot with, with administrative uh, issues that, that comes with that. And well, sometimes I even deliver a, a short speech during conferences, as you can see, and uh, enjoy very much being here and, and being with TDF, of course. So, handing over to Italo, Michael. Yes. Italo. Okay. Uh, so, the next one is about the advisory board. I think uh, the advisory board has grown dramatically over the last two years and this is also significant because uh, it shows that there are more and more companies that are put their trust on, on TDF. Uh, when we started the companies were Google, Free Software Foundation, uh, Frodev Germany, uh, the, that, Frodev is the old uh, openoffice.org uh, German community that then switched to LibreOffice. Uh, there was SPI and I think Suzanne Redat. Uh, all the others are came afterwards. Uh, for those that do not know, MIMO uh, is uh, the French organization that oversees the migration to LibreOffice of the French government. <coughs> and CAST uh, is uh, uh, we can say the, the science academy of the uh, Kingdom of the Saudi Arabia uh, that is overseeing uh, the uh, a lot of the uh, work uh, on, uh, of course, on translation to Arabic and also of uh, uh, languages that are written uh, from right to left. Uh, 
which is exactly the opposite as we are used to do. Uh, then you have Cloudon, Itomi, Collaboral, Anido, Intel, AMD, uh, and uh, Red Hat and SUSE that are historic uh, partners. And Studio Storti, who is an Italian company. And uh, uh, all this, I think, in terms of uh, uh, capability, of spending capability by TDF has been driven by donations. So these are donations by individuals. Each, each, uh, uh, each brick uh, is one day of donations. So this uh, is since May 2000, 3000, 2013 to August 2014. As you can see, of course, we have had a little bit of decrease, but it, if you look at that on the long range, it's rather stable. So that means that we are attracting uh, around 5,000 donations per month from uh, individuals. And uh, this gives us the capability of uh, investing, but not only to invest, but also to uh, save some money for the future, which is very important. So I think the board of directors, uh, the first generation, the second generation, have uh, decided not just to spend all the money, but to spend, to invest some money and to save some money for the future. So let's just assume that the flow of uh, donation stops uh, uh, to, today. No one hopes that. But we still have, I think, two years in a bank uh, of money to go. And you have, this means that you have two years to think about how to recreate the flow of donations. And uh, uh, now what has happened during, I, what, what has happened during the last 12 months uh, is just highlights uh, because uh, the problem is that too much happens for a 20 minutes speech. Uh, so we have reached 200 members and uh, we have reached 800 new developers uh, and this I think it has been an amazing achievement because uh, uh, before uh, the fork everyone was convinced that no volunteer developers were going to work on the openoffice.org code. Uh, we have 40 certified developers and we hope to have more in the future, of course, and we hope to have uh, uh, people who are working in migration and trainings. Uh, we have launched the Document Liberation Project, is a let's call a sister project of LibreOffice that comes from the, uh, the filters that have been developed by the project. These filters have not just been added to LibreOffice but has been, has been made available to the entire ecosystem to increase the, uh, to liberate the document, so to allow people using also other software to add filters to import proprietary documents that in, se in several cases have been lost because the program that has generated those documents is not existing anymore. Uh, this is a little bit personal and I'm very proud to do that. This is, in Italy we have the first native language association that is entirely inspired by TDF. And I think uh, uh, it's been quite a long uh, travel to, to found the association that is called Libre Italia, but now we have it and uh, I, I will have an, another slide on that. The first US has ACFEST, thanks to Robinson and Joel who are just on back in the room. Uh, I think it's the first and uh, I invite everyone that has good contacts in the States to relate with Joel and Robinson to create a network in the States. The States are a huge country, so creating an, a, a community there is, a, is probably 10 times more difficult than creating a community in Europe, on, in a European country. But if we want to really succeed as a project, as a global project, we have to get a community in the States. I think it's, it's in, very important and we all have to help Joel and Robinson and all the others uh, uh, coming from the continent, that is Mark Perry coming from Canada, there, we, we all have to help them 
to create a community. It's a hell of a job, and uh, so only with our help they can succeed. And we had a number of successful product launches. Uh, this is document liberation. These are the filters that have been developed by the document liberation guys. M many of these filters are adopted by other software, by other open source and even by some proprietary software, I think. Uh, these are the reviewers for certification, so there is a group of people uh, during the marketing certification track, there will be uh, a number of speeches about certification. Who is interested in doing in that is invited in room 105, starting from this afternoon. Uh, this is Libre Italia, and uh, we have uh, five people from Libre Italia here. We have the president, Sonia, who is there. Uh, the vice president, who is Marina, I think is the only association where the president and vice president are women in a technology environment. I, I should say that they are not the president and the vice president because they are women. They are president and the vice president because they are the most effective lady in promoting LibreOffice, the president, and the most technical guy inside the association. <laughs> Uh, then we have Alfredo Parisi, who is our mascot. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, uh, the name uh, Osvaldo Gervasi. Sorry, I, I've just I'm just over 60 years, so just bear with me. I'm losing my neurons. Osvaldo is there. Uh, we have we have launched less than one week ago, and we are we have 110 members as. 10 minutes ago. So it's uh, it's really, we have a statue that is uh, entirely based, of course it has been a little bit tweaked to reflect the Italian law, but it's entirely based on the TDF statutes. And uh, the, the, the mission is to promote LibreOffice and ODF. Uh, product launches, these are the last two product launches we know, you know that we have tried to uh, distribute press releases in the local language. <coughs> Uh, we should do it better. So if you want to translate our press release in your local language, please send an email to me or to Sophie to organize that. We have journalists in our mailing list in more than 20 countries, so we can probably address the, your country's journalists in the local language. If you send us the the uh, translated press release, we will take care about distributing that in the local language. Uh, the fact that we have distributed press release in the local language has given us this kind of results. So LibreOffice 4.2, 6,000 articles or links since February, and LibreOffice 4.3, in one month we have already 4,000 articles and or links and we have very important articles. I've just listed two, CNET, uh, sorry, uh, CNET, and, uh, which is uh, a very large network. Actually, uh, I've met the CNET reviewers, ed uh, editor-in-chief of reviews, and he installed LibreOffice. He, he supposed, let's say that he's supposed to install every software and to review every software. He has installed LibreOffice the afternoon after our meeting. So he was writing, actually, what I discovered, that he was writing reviews of LibreOffice without having LibreOffice installed on his computer. <laughs> now he, he has installed. And O Globo, that is the, the, the largest uh, daily in Brazil, uh, uh, has featured an article on, uh, on uh, LibreOffice. And uh, we, we can improve these results. Uh, I would like to have, uh, let's say, LibreOffice on the front page of Frankfurter Allgemeine or something like that. Uh, maybe the Financial Times. Uh, we have the, uh, the journalists in our mailing list. Let's try to do that. Uh, we have increased the number of active users. Uh, these are people that are pinging for updates. Uh, based on this and based on the fact that we have Linux users that do not update they update through the repository. We now estimate between, I would say, 100 and 110 million users uh, worldwide. Of course, it's a ballpark figure 
uh, is based on our data but also on estimates. Uh, this is the growth of developers, this is amazing, uh, and I think what is amazing is that the small green, light green uh, are the new developers that are attracted by the project on, on a monthly basis. And I think after four years, not having missed a single month is, a, is an incredible achievement. Uh, these are the commits during the last 24 months. Uh, this is the trend line, so they are growing. Of course, there are months where June, July, some people take vacation. They should not, but they do that. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, so commits are decreasing. So you are kindly invited, if you are a developer, not to take vacation. Uh, or to administer your vacation in a better way inside the developer's community. Uh, these are the code committers per month. This is the average uh, of active on a yearly basis. So it's between 280 and 340. Of course, it's going up and down. But I think that having this number of active developers on a yearly basis, uh, by the way, Microsoft states in, in their annual report that their active number of developers on Microsoft Office is 420. So we are not so far from the number of active developers of Microsoft Office. Of course, it's, a, it's different because we have many volunteers, but it's not anymore like in the past 50 against uh, 420. And uh, Michael, this is yours. That is the microphone. Hello. So this, uh, the graphs hide all manner of interesting things. So uh, if you break this out by uh, companies and groups, um, so this is basically individuals who have committed code in a month. And I would say at this point that code is not the only contribution. As Robinson will tell you, QA, you know, triaging bugs is absolutely fantastic. We just don't have any good stats on that yet. So Robinson, over to you. Um, um, but uh, code is an important contribution, let's face it, we, we run it. Um, and so each month we look at how you know, this snapshot breaks down for uh, various affiliations. And so you can see some interesting things here. You, you see mostly blue, right? These are volunteers. These are contributors that never can committed to the code before LibreOffice has started. And they're the vast majority of, of people here. And you can also see some other interesting things, like uh, this is multi-coreware, who do OpenCL uh, enablement stuff. A massive spike of work just before our last release from loads of people. Like the, there's really a lot of them, and they arrive, did some good stuff, and then uh, disappeared again. Not the ideal, obviously. Hopefully they will return. But there is still some um, ongoing work, so uh, that's good. Um, what else can you see? This green is Sousa, and mm, um, that, that changed, I guess, mostly to a purple of Calabra at some point here. There's some kind of transition transition here uh, going on. What else? Um, some of these other things at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think that's probably about uh, about it from that. Let me uh, switch to the next slide. Okay, clicking the right button. Uh, you can use perfect. The, perfect. Okay. So that's committers, and our whole governance is set up to empower individuals and, and individual committers. So uh, the previous snapshot gives a good picture of what you'd expect to see in our membership. Okay, so the people who control the organisation are extremely distributed, vast majority of the volunteers. This is a volume of commits. So a commit is something like a, a unit of thought. You know, like you fix one coverity bug. Uh, I'm looking for Quaylon. He fixes a lot of coverity bugs. This is a you know, huge, huge spike here. Um, but again, you see that the uh, individual volunteers, and particularly when you add in uh, original people that used to work uh, on, on Open Office back in the day, these two blues, are still a significant proportion of what's going on. And again, you can see the Sousa, Sousa to Calabria a spike, and you can see Red Hat, but a slightly a different picture there in terms of volume, uh, but still, you know, we, we have reasonably uh, diverse. So, development stuff, what has happened? So I can't do justice to a year of uh, what we've done at all. Um, so I just thought I'd pull out a few things. Um, the first thing is that for, you know, um, ever since VCL was created, it has been sub-optimal, our, our toolkit, the, the thing that draws our, our dialogues. And uh, Quaylorn and crew have, have nearly finished this. It's within spitting distance. All the dialogues, there's some, some bits to go. It's absolutely fantastic work. Um, and we've only started it in the last year and a half or so. Um, so or maybe two years. And uh, we're nearly there. Um, just gives you some idea of the scale of the problems that we're dealing with, perhaps. 
but uh, some brilliant stuff. Um, on the other side here, you can see uh, unit tests. So again, the trend very healthily going upwards. Uh, you know, the more of these, the merrier, the less the less regressions we get. Um, German comments. We're in Switzerland. You understand German? Um, maybe. Um, so uh, you know, if you if you can speak or read or write German, you don't need deep programming skills. It helps to understand a little bit. Um, but we would really love help translating the last. Uh, 10,000 lines of German comments. And this is really helpful for internationalizing the project. Uh, my, my dear friend Miklos struggles with writer internals on occasion, and there's this huge, helpful-looking German comment, you know? And uh, Google Translate is, you know, good as it is. It doesn't quite do the technical justice you can see. But either way, again, the trend there is obviously very positive and going down, but I, we'd love to get it to zero. This graph will go to zero pretty soon. I'm optimistic. Quite long. Are you optimistic? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Quite long is probably even now, you know, like uh, yeah, generating the bigger commit spike for Red Hat. Um, and, uh, and German comments is again something we can get to zero. You know, it, it's a job that we can finish. We finished a number of those things. Uh, the string cleanup, for example, is pretty much complete. It's done. And that's nice. It's another thing that's been there for 20 years, you know, or 15 years maybe. And it's, it's great to get it done. Um, Keverity is another, uh, just it, perhaps it's hard to understand quite how good the number is. I mean, seven potential static checking warnings per 100,000 lines of code doesn't seem terribly low, but it's phenomenally low. By the industry average, it's you know, like open source projects, which are pretty good, 60 plus is, is the average. So, you know, we're massively better than our peers here. And again, a huge amount of the work is, is Quaylorn and like Marcus and Norbert and some, some people have just burned through this. But again, hopefully another metric we can get down to zero, like, you know, Ron no. Severity. Perhaps. Uh, let, let's see. Um, so, some, some really good clean up and paying down of technical debt, which is always encouraging. And then just a, another slide on some random grab bag of things. Like I say, what, one of the problems with LibreOffice is it's so big that our release notes don't say rewrote the dialogues entirely. They just don't say that because it takes two years. Right? So, all we can say is we, we did another 200 this release or something like that, right? Um, uh, and so a lot of what we do is, by net definition, detail. Interoperability fixing is a huge detail problem. You know, the specifications are vast. The core data model is huge. But just really encouraging ways that it's been improved. So a particularly round trip interop to OpenXML, CloudOn have invested very heavily in that um, to make sure that when you load your OpenXML document, perhaps we can't render it all. You know, perhaps we're missing a weird glow effect or a, a strange char feature or something. Uh, but when you've edited it and saved it back again, you restore that information. So it's not lost. Um, so you know, so you can edit the document and be confident that the user will have you know their, their original improved document there. And I think that's that's a really key key feature. We're very grateful for CloudOn's investment. Um, and yeah, just huge swathes of detail. You know, there's always more formulae to knock off to keep up with the competition. Uh, performance, something always happens. You know, just lots and lots, lots of detail, more than you can you know, write, write in a slide. Apple keynote filter. I think that's cool. If you if you want to move people away from Apple products, uh, and you know lots, lots of other little features. I think we've talked about some of these before. So that's my attempt to do justice to a year of development in a very lame way, mostly by graphs. I missed your feature. I apologise for that. But, uh, it was only negative five minutes to do it in. So entirely. What do you think? Uh, I think that's about it. Yes. Um, you can clap, where you want, but RSI. You know, if you want to watch out. You can get it. Questions? Do we have any questions? Questions? No questions. Statistics? <laughs> okay. Well, the good news is that we split into three tracks shortly after this, and there's all sorts of interesting, yes. interesting talks. It's only come for the uh, suffering in the morning. So, it'll be very good. Thank you so very much. Take care. Thank you.